Hi, I'm Richard Goddara. I was a songwriter. I haven't been a songwriter for a long time. The truth is, I started in the business as a songwriter in the early middle 60s. That was the heyday of the songwriter. Had I continued on that path instead of the wayward uh, path that I followed, I would have been a gazillionaire many times over because I actually participated in writing hit songs. Hit songs that lasted, hit songs that have meaning across the generations. Well, first I started writing songs myself, and um, one of the songs I wrote myself when I was a kid, I was 16 years old, I idolized Jerry Lee Lewis. And I wrote this song, and eventually I got to meet him, and um, he recorded it. And it was sort of um, semi-paraphrasing a great ball to fire, and it was called I'm on Fire. And it was a real thrill. So it shows you where the thrill comes from. It's not always in the hit, it's in the doing of it and then the sharing of it. So being a songwriter is a great thing. In my travels through the, quote, Brill Building, I encountered two other guys who were songwriters, Bob Feldman and Jerry Goldstein, and we became a writing team. Now, there were writing teams writing songs to order for artists who would then record them. Publishers would engage us they would then take the songs to these artists who were coming up for recording. We would create the demos. Very often the demos were followed uh, pretty, much, um, pretty much verbatim, and that became, became the record. So the song and the songwriting gave us the opportunity to spend time in studios. And by virtue of that, we started thinking, well, we could make recordings of our songs um, as good or better than the people at record companies doing it. So why don't we find some artists and record our songs? We put together a group, um, a female vocal group, who had a few hit records before we met them, but we channeled them in a little different direction. The group was called The Angels, and the song we wrote for them was My Boyfriend's Back. My Boyfriend's Back is a song that, for better or worse, seems to uh, represent this girl group period that began in the early 60s. The Angels had this one huge record, a couple of other follow-up records, but then it sort of fizzled for them. After The Angels, as we continued producing, um, we could no longer write songs to order for girl groups or for, for other people because along came the Beatles, the Stones, um, the quote British invasion, and the whole business shifted. Let me take you from there to 1965, and we're starting to run out of money, so we decided, well, we can also be an artist. So not only were we producing and um, writing songs, we started performing. So we made a record, and on this particular record, it was a cover of a standard song done with a ska beat. In the middle of the song was a narration, and one of my partners, Bob Feldman, narrated it with a fake English accent. A little love, love, what slowly grows and grows, love, more on that comes and goes, love, that's all I want from you. And he just narrated it that way. Well. We had connections with radio stations, and we sent, our, we sent the record around. It was on a small label called Swan. That's who we licensed it to. And we got a call from a DJ in, uh, that we knew in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So he said, listen, I think I can make this record number one in Virginia. If you guys would come down here and uh, perform, we're having a big show. And uh, he said, ah, sure, we'll do it. He says, but the only thing is, because in a narration, nobody is going to accept you as pure white Jewish kids from New York. I said, well, what do they think? He said, well, you know, uh, sounds like you're English. The kids think, I said, no, we can't be English. So we have to be something. So we thought about it, and we became Australian. Eventually, 
created this song, I Want Candy, dressed up in these outfits, which are zebra skins, African war drums. Uh, the show began with spears. And uh, we talked with Australian accent, like, write you all mate. That's all, write you all mate. But this song, I Want Candy, changed everything. It became a hit, but not only a hit, it crossed generations, gets licensed over and over again for sync, advertising, um, to make the point and addressing uh, writers, people in bands and songwriting, is that here's a song from 1965 with a derivative Bo Diddley-ish kind of beat that um, captured the imagination and crosses the generations and earns more money today, more money today than it did when it was a hit. If you write songs, if you own copyrights, if you represent um, copyrights, these things have values, has value far beyond the initial intention. We never expected this when the song was done. And it's, it's a catchy song, but it's, there's no moment of brilliance. You know, it's got a good beat. It's got a good melody. Uh, the record was great. It's been a hit three or four times, but used in movies, used in advertising over and over again. It's the song that makes the difference. You can be an interesting artist, but without that song, you're not so interesting. So that's, that's, basically, that's basically the message. Whether you write it, produce it, or have anything at all to do with the business, it's the song that matters.